Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-42. We ended the last adventure with injuries to Yolanda and Phidias, but they had arrived at the mining colony of Tigos Vale after being ambushed by the Knolls. The rest of the party had difficulty in catching their own rides, but thanks to a well-placed web spell, Harris managed to capture a total of five Kanta. We rejoin that group as they move across the southern landscape as the sun begins to set. Well, the tracks are clear. Yolanda obviously made it this far, stated Brother Stance of the Verte Order. His statement was amended by Sir Omel, pointing out that at least her mount made it this far, which garnered several angry looks. The foursome reached a small cliff that overlooked the ocean and the mining community. Grish spoke, stating, We are here. I present to you Tigos Vale. Not the friendliest place on the planet, but we should be able to get a drink here. As he finished speaking, his mount began to struggle under his hold, followed by the rest moving nervously about. What the... Sir Elmel complained, but then caught movement behind him. Knolls! A group of eight large creatures advanced on the party, and the group quickly dismounted to face their opponents. As the four adventurers stood in a line, the humanoids made it obvious that the odds were going to be two to one against the party. Grish looked at Elmel, who replied, First to three? The Zenobian nodded and grinned broadly, but they were stunned to hear Harris say, I'll take that bet, and threw out his hands, causing a cone of flame to escape his fingertips, igniting a trio of gnolls. After the shock of the flame jet wore off, all parties closed rank and melee broke out. Harris moved in on one of the creatures that was on fire as his associates moved in on theirs. A flurry of blows on each side led to the clashing of metal on metal as the humanoids had adorned themselves in piecemeal armor. Grish and Omel fought back to back against the four that had targeted them and spun around, each slashing at different opponents. Sir Omel took down one knoll with a slash through the throat as Grish leveled his blunt weapon into the skull of a second. Brother Stance Scissor kicked one of his into the other that was still on fire from Harris's spell, igniting it as well. The two flaming gnolls attempted to attack the mage, but were hampered by their body hair being on fire. One did advance and smashed the wizard in the mouth, but received a dagger to the eye as a reaction attack. The two remaining gnolls on Grish and Omel each got a stab in with their rusty blades as their associates went down. The cleric and knight spun out, pinning both gnolls between them. As each humanoid faced off with their human opponents, Sir Omel raised his sharp sword to eye level of the his creature. Grish smacked his opponent in the face with his weapon, causing it to collide with the other gnoll's head, sending Omel's blade through both skulls in a deadly stab. Brother Stance's opponents had extinguished themselves and charged the weaponless monk. As he dodged the first sword swipe, he took his opponent's arm and gashed the second knoll through the charred torso before flipping the knoll's blade 180 degrees and impaling itself on its own blade. Harris finished off his opponents with a coup de gras dagger swipe. The four adventurers stood admiring their victory. Harris shrugged and pointed out, everyone got two, so no winner. Grish and Omel chuckled and shook their heads. Stance clapped the spellcaster on the back and said, I think we'll give you the edge on that one, my old friend. The quartet turned to find all five Kanta right where they had left them. The beasts were stupid, but not stupid enough to go over the cliff. Exhausted, the creatures had slowly remained present. The PCs moved over and took the bridles in hand and began to walk the creatures down the trail to Tigos Vale. 
As the four adventurers entered town, they noticed no one in the streets, but detected music and merriment coming from a large building. Tavern? queried Sir Elmel, and the others nodded in agreement. The men lashed their tired mounts to a pole outside of the tavern, where a rain barrel gave aid to the thirsty animals. As the group approached the door, Grish cautioned them that there may be a language barrier, and the miners were known to be a bit standoffish. He grabbed the door handle and then added, They really don't like the green guard. Or foreigners. Or adventurers. The door opened and a light and loud singing greeted the party, which quickly stopped at the sight of the large Zenobian. The cleric entered the center of the room and looked around at the grubby miners before moving to the bartender. Using the Denali language, he obtained a tray full of beverages. He tossed two gold coins to the grateful owner, who thanked him profusely. After downing one tankard, he moved to a corner table where Omel, Stance, and Harris joined him. Grish gave two tankards to Omel and one to each of the smaller members. All quickly inhaled the beverages and more drinks arrived at the table. The proprietor said something to Grish who nodded and replied with a big smile, giving another gold coin to the man who bowed deeply and shouted to someone in the back. The miners were happy not to be harassed and returned to their own merriment. As another round of drinks arrived, so did large platefuls of tender meat and small tubers. The men dug into the food and quickly devoured the meal. As they sat refreshed, they pondered where their associate could be found. Grish called the innkeeper over and spoke in the strange tongue, but gave visual cues that he was looking for Yolanda and Phidias. The man shrugged, appearing to have no knowledge of the missing pair. As the man moved away, Brother Stance grabbed his hand and gave him a thumbs up to the empty plate and asked him what it was. The man clearly didn't understand, and the pair looked to Grish, who wiped his chin clean of some stray ale and belched out the question. The man's response turned everyone's blood cold as he uttered one word, Kanta. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.